and we are now live on Facebook. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. <laughs> <laughs> good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, I'm Phil Brown from ITDI. Welcome to today's special Facebook Live. We're delighted to be here for taking a look at Great Minds in Language Education, also known as GMAL, to share some reflections from Scott Thornbury and Kevin Ryan from their recent courses. And also uh, we will have Stephen Herder and uh, later on Dorothy Zemak joining us live to introduce their new courses. It's all pretty exciting, Phil. Thank you so much for coming in and pulling this all together with us. Oh, it was a great team effort and fantastic to all be here. Um, so for people who are wondering a little bit, what is GMAL or Great Minds, Great Minds in Language Education, then I'm going to hand you over to Steve, who's going to tell you a little bit about the background and where this brand new course came from. Great. I'll just share the screen here. And you're seeing that fine, hey, Phil? Yeah. Good, good. So uh, this course uh, started, or this series of courses started this year in 2021. And you can see we've got a little, uh, this is the actual website uh, image from the website. You can see the link down at the bottom. Uh, our purpose today is to tell you about these, to kind of share some of the successes of the first two courses and introduce uh, Dorothy's course and my course, all within this idea of a, a G mile, which obviously great minds in language education uh, is focusing on books that we love. So we've each chosen a book that was uh, especially wonderful to us. And we're looking at this opportunity to immerse ourselves into it for eight weeks, uh, both uh, Phil and I had very significant experiences when doing our MA course, mine online through a Skype study group. And I know yours was face to face, hey, Phil, in uh, Tokyo area. So yes, that's right. this, this idea, uh, it's been probably the most meaningful uh, study group kind of learning experience that I've ever had, but it was a long time ago. Uh, like 14 years ago. So I've been just dying to have an opportunity. And I'm so excited that uh, I'll be able to uh, facilitate my own course uh, with the John Hattie book that we're looking at. So in a nutshell, bring uh, a group of uh, like-minded teachers together for eight weeks to go deep into understanding a book and discussing and uh, applying what we've learned from it. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And we also joined in the room now with, with by Dorothy. And so thank you for that warm introduction just on um, Gmail. And today then we'll have, uh, we'll be sharing a live video. Of, uh, sorry, we'll be sharing a video from uh, Scott and Kevin and listening to their reflections and having a chance to comment and talk about it a little bit as well in the first part of today's session. Then after that, uh, Dorothy and Steve will be introducing their courses and taking any questions from you. And finally, at the end as well, we will give you a second chance to come and meet them more informally backstage off Facebook Live, but within the Zoom room where you can ask questions and say hello. And I want to say welcome, everybody. You see uh, Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Hey. And uh, Dorothy's just finished jumping from one job over to this job. Thank you so much. Your your, Hi, leap, you. your leaping continues to impress us. Yeah, so, literally zooming from one room to another. There you go. Um, so, uh, like I said, we're uh, Scott Thornbury and Kevin Ryan and Dorothy Zemak and I got together at the very beginning of not having launched the Gmail courses and did a, a panel discussion with the four of us to um, introduce the uh, books that Kevin and uh, Scott were doing. Uh, we weren't exactly sure 
how successful they were going to be, but we, we felt that they would be successful. So I'd like to share, and we're very lucky today, that while they weren't able to attend live, they were able to make uh, a nice little video uh, summarizing their own experience leading these courses, as well as some takeaways to share with you who might be considering to join my course or Dorothy's course starting in October. So I want to show you um, some comments, okay, some uh, feedback we have at the end of the courses, we have these course evaluations. So what the teachers are saying about previous courses, Kevin's course was on task-based language teaching. Uh, take a look at that. I'll just let you read it yourselves. And that was from Andrea. Uh, I was uh, very lucky that I was able to participate as a full member of this course, and it was phenomenal. The, the friendships, the learning, the different contexts we all had, uh, I, I, we all, it was a big love fest towards and, the end of it. And you, you spent eight weeks together, right? Yeah, uh, we spent eight weeks together. Uh, teachers saying, you know, I look for, this is the highlight of my week. Now that's during COVID, you know, any kind of <laughs> genuine human contact might be, uh, you know, a, a great big high. But literally, we struggled. We had some difficulties with, uh, with the readings and the, the understanding. It was very challenging. Um, so anyway, uh, let's move on to Scott's course. Uh, Scott did the book Meaningful Action, which was um, Earl Stevick's influence on language teaching. And take a look at this first one. You see Adrian, and then uh, Kata. And this is also a brand new course for Scott, as well as Kevin. And you know, something that he was really excited to do and has been thrilled about as well, so. Yeah, uh, and I love that exceeded my expectations because nobody really knew what to expect, right? Uh, I, I believe Scott had 18 members in his course from all around the world and we had uh, 12 members in our course uh, from seven different countries. So let's see what else people were saying. Fabio was a great participant. I, I remember how, how genuine and friendly I popped into a couple of Scott sessions, and he was always excited to, to share things from his context. I remember him specifically. And like the advanced skills courses, I think one of the things that you really noticed from these courses is, you know, the wealth of teacher experience and ideas that comes from the participants in the room. Yes, and it's really a case of the sum of the whole being greater than the individuals. Um, Barb Sakamoto, one of our fearless leaders, says we are better together. Right. And she really believes that uh, all of us have this kind of collaborative bent. Uh, Margaret was actually in Turkey and um, she was a very active member, actually, in both courses, both Kevin's and Scott's. Um, uh, we're, we're now saying we had a few teachers who did both and everyone said it was very difficult to, to, to do both at once. So we're, we're more or less nudging people to try to pick one or the other this time. Uh, we may schedule them at different times next year, but for now, maybe one is enough. One is challenging enough. Anyway, yeah. this is a little bit longer, but please take a moment to read Margaret's um, feedback here. Yeah, I guess some people too, they might have a bit more time in their schedule. Obviously those who are, have got families as well as teaching commitments and other professional development commits and et cetera, et cetera. Um, definitely found that one course was just about right for them. I think later on, I'm gonna show you a little bit in one of my chapters, what's happening in the book and give you a little bit uh, of an idea of the time commitments. Okay, that'd be great to share. Yeah. And yeah, Margaret was um, uh, uh, 
what's the word? I've lost the word, but brimming with uh, very nice things to say. And she was a very lovely uh, teacher that uh, I, I loved talking with. So thank you so much, Margaret, for sharing that. Uh, great to see everyone who's joined us. Uh, Adelasa, uh, Zachary, Don, and um, Elena, and Hannah Relna, we know who you are. Um, hi, Dory. And also Beata. Uh, everybody else who's also watching, please feel free to say hi. Let us know where you're coming from hmm. and share anything else you'd like to. Feel free to add any comments or ask any questions. So this is actually the link. Uh, if you go to itdi.pro, you can see uh, courses as one of the tabs and uh, or you can uh, go to this link as well. And we'll share that in the chat as well. Would you like me to take us over to the uh, first video by Scott? Absolutely. OK, so let me just stop and then share again. So it must be in the wee earlies of early hours of the morning. Uh, so Scott has kindly put, put together a video for us to share. Yes. This is a premiere. It's never been seen before publicly. Right. I got my options on nicely, my sound, everything else, going to go bigger. OK, so please enjoy. We got five minutes of Scott sharing his reflections on his course. Written by different uh, Hi, um, I'm Scott Thornbury, and I've been asked to reflect on the experience of running a uh, eight session course in the Great Minds and Language Education series, uh, where we looked at this book, um, Meaningful Action, edited by Jane Arnold and Tim Murphy, published in 2013, which is a kind of homage to the work of Earl Stevick, who uh, was a very influential educationist, uh, language teacher, language teacher trainer uh, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, particularly associated with what are now generally lumped together as humanistic approaches. So he introduced to the language teaching world uh, a number of approaches, including uh, the silent way, counseling, language learning, and suggestopedia. Uh, which, although they may not have survived intact, as it were, uh, have been very influential, I think. And that's really what we were looking at. This is a series of articles written by different uh, scholars whose common cause, if you like, is to uh, perpetuate the work that Earl Stevick did in uh, not just in humanistic education, but in areas that are more associated with the affective side, if you like, the emotional side of language learning, or also the holistic side, yeah, taking into account the full person. Uh, so we've got articles by people like uh, Herbert Puchter, Diane Larson Freeman, uh, Tim Murphy, uh, a number of uh, scholars from all around the world who, who you know, took a particular point of view with regard to uh, the work of Earl Stevick. So what we did was, uh, in the course, we kind of cut up the book into eight sections, or chose eight of the um, chapters to focus on for each of the sessions. And that gave us quite a wide variety of issues like motivation, identity, embodiment, um, teacher education, and so on. And I think from that point of view, it was a good choice because it was so varied. Uh, and also because the articles are not written for a purely academic audience. They're actually pitched at practicing teachers. Uh, they're not necessarily research-based. They are often quite reflective and anecdotal. Uh, and so, as I said, they worked quite well. Um, we didn't cover all the articles by any means. And, you know, maybe there's another course to look at the, you know, the, the articles that we had to skip. And uh, 
the interesting thing for me running the course is the first time I've ever run a kind of like reading group, essentially. I mean, I've been in reading groups, but I've never run one uh, and never run one online. And so that was the, the particular challenge. We had a fantastic group of people uh, from a wide range of contexts and a huge range of countries. Uh, and we met regularly once a week and we discussed the chapter and the way that it was organized. And I think through this was a, a joint decision that there was a kind of balance between input, if you like, from me and discussion using the breakout room function in Zoom between the participants. So often the, the process would be, you know, go into discussion, talk about the article that you've read. Here's some guiding questions and let's come back. Let's um feedback on that what were the interesting things you came up with and then i would do uh my own input or invite uh somebody from the course with fair warning to um to lead a discussion on the chapter of the week as it were so i think there was i think uh, there was quite a good balance between sort of input and discussion uh over the one and a half hours that were allocated to the, each session so my experience my you know reflecting back on this i would say yeah i would definitely want to do something like this again i'd love to participate in this and i think one of the you know testimony to the fact that it, it worked was was the fact that a number of the uh participants decided to stay on as it were and they chose another book by earl stevick and have continued the discussion on a weekly basis ever since. So I think, as I say, uh, this would seem to indicate that uh, the interest is there once the dynamic has been established. So yes, I would definitely do it again. Hey, what do you think of that, Phil? Oh, you're muted caught myself there thank you uh it was really interesting to hear a little bit more about the book and elstivic's work and also hear some familiar names and friends um like tim murphy and so on that had contributed to it and then hear about kind of the different takes as well as hearing about kind of the process of what people experience from uh taking chapters and also getting a chance to lead through discussions as well yeah, and the point he made at the end, which he was saying, obviously, this uh, format works, that the, the group has literally picked another, uh, a, a significant part of the group has picked another book that they're, they're following up on some main ideas that came out of it. So the, the camaraderie, the mm -hmm. collaboration, the friendships cannot be, um, you know, over, over stressed or yeah, so edified. The, the group is completely self-autonomous in itself and yep. continue to run and who knows where it will go from here. It's brilliant. Yeah. I'm, I'm really thrilled that, that one of the members of Scott's course has already signed up for my course. And uh, I was surprised. I thought he might be busy on his other course, <laughs> but I'm thrilled that he's coming over to work because he's a, he's a great, a great teacher. Anyway, shall we um, move on to Kevin's video? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Kevin is in the States right now. And again, this was a, a bit of an on, ungodly hour. And he um, graciously, I was teasing him how he got his hair and shirt to match the background <laughs> of the room so nicely. So here we go. Kevin, take it away. Hi, I'm Kevin Ryan. I coordinated the course on TBLT or task based language teaching for ITDI this last spring. It's part of the series of courses called Great Minds, focusing on people and ideas in language learning and teaching. I felt honored and to be honest, a little bit chuffed when Stephen Herter contacted me in 2020 with the idea of a new longer format course geared towards a book on a specific topic. My first reaction was to fall back on my specialty technology and language teaching. But Stephen posed the leadership as a way to learn something myself that I've always been curious about. Casting about for ideas, I discovered a book on TBLT published in 2019. 
It was a full on treatment of task based learning and teaching by five luminaries or great minds, I call them in the field. Rod Ellis, Peter, Peter Skian, Naoko Shintani, Xiaofeng Li, and Craig Lambert. The book on first reading turned out to be a big gulp. It would be a race to cover all the topics adequately in eight weeks. What made the book special was that it looked at TBLT from five different perspectives. The first is cognitive interactionist, focusing on Prabhu and the early researchers. We waded into very deep chapter of psycholinguistics to learn from Skian and Peter Robinson. Next up was the social cultural, sociocultural perspective with James Lantoff. Then the psychological perspective, taking from Dornier and motivation mostly. The educational perspective dealt mostly with classroom research and was the perfect segue into the more practical application of this research, where the last three weeks we discussed syllabus design, methodology, and evaluation. Now, early on, I started blogging about the course prep, partly to keep myself honest and partly to drum up interest. I also kept track of the time of the 164.2 hours so far, about two thirds went into preparation and a third on the joys of leading a really creative, diverse group of educators. I don't remember who joked first that this was a graduate school without the grades, but they got it almost right. I've taught postdoc scientists in a national grad school prep by the Ministry of Agriculture in China and to University of Tokyo students and to tiny graduate courses at my main university. These made me realize that the opportunity at ITDI would be monumental if it worked. And worked it did. All the people stepped up at ITDI, including Scott, emailing and cajoling people to try this new format with a relative unknown like me. We ended up with my perfect number of, uh, for students in a class, 12. They were all full-time educators from seven different countries in a wide variety of teaching situation, which made for great discussion. After the first couple of weeks, we settled into a pattern best geared to our commitments. The readings led to a set of questions about aspects we agreed with, were surprised by, and those we thought questionable. Our weekly discussions focused mostly on the surprising elements, and we continued online with the others. My job during the class as a leader and coordinator was made really easy by the wealth of experience and background knowledge of our members. The bar was set high by the book, but each week the 12 brought the research alive with their own concerns and perspectives. It was a post-grad heaven. I'm looking forward to teaching this course again. I also have an idea for another Great Minds book, and you might as well. I'm also looking forward to the two new courses this fall, where Stephen and Dorothy can take what we've learned and make their courses even better. Here's to Great Minds. Okay, I got, uh, you're muted again. I got two big tingles out of that. <laughs> Isn't that well done, huh? Absolutely. That's yeah. one of the best videos I've seen. Poor Kevin's going to be hit up for making videos for all of us from this point on, if he's not <laughs> careful. Indeed. Uh, Dorothy, had you had a chance to see that before, or was that the Yes, best? yes. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, no, I... I, I I wish I could have been in his class. <laughs> yeah, that's next time, exactly next time. What I thought. Right, but it, clear, clearly he'll do it again. So yeah, and it's. I mean, where where do we have opportunities for this kind of sort of graduate school level discussion? I mean, you know, ten minutes in the hall at a conference, but then you're pulled off somewhere else and whatnot. And it was it was it was a great idea to really dig into something that you care about and. You know, it's not for a grade you're not going to get promoted but you can you can learn something it's it's really nice 
and the pressure was so nice every week that like I said, yeah. wow, I said, I haven't felt this pressure since <laughs> doing my MA to, to yeah. finish the reading, to understand it enough to then communicate yeah. it clearly as a starting point for discussions. And, and that was very refreshing. Um, yeah. In Japan, we have so many in our own communities, we have so many teachers, uh, for example, in the university community, that we would love to come in and, and they're among the luckiest with research budgets that yeah. can actually pay for a course like this. So we, we hope some of them will take us up on this offer. Um, so where do you want to go next, Phil? Um, actually, I just wanted to say as well, you know, besides the lovely video from Kevin and, you know, the phenomenally good experience that everyone's shared from his course, uh, one of the other extra things which he just mentioned was that, you know, he had his blog, uh, we can share the link to it later, and, you know, seeing him share in his blog as he went through the process of preparing for that, is, mm. you know, it's, it's fantastic for anybody else who's preparing their own courses to see how another um, teacher, teacher, educator goes through and how do they approach tackling a book and putting a, basically a grad class together and, you know, something that's there you can go back to and enjoy time and time again. Well, that, that's, that's probably the reason I initially contacted him is he shares widely and deeply. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got so many interests and he shares all of it through Facebook and, and Twitter, Instagram, yeah. whatever he's using. I, I pick it up. And so I've, I've, uh, and we've both been teaching around the same number of years. Hey, Dorothy, you, you're in that same yeah. you know, generation, hey? And it's just so yeah. nice. It's so nice to, to learn from peers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, to watch it happening. Yeah, yeah. All right. So in the, I'm just going to check in the comments. So we've got a bravo from um, Henna Reldna and also going to return to live class with students just a second. Um, so in the next session, just to answer a couple of questions, then next part of this session, sorry, then we're moving into uh, hearing from Stephen and Dorothy about their upcoming courses, which start in October and November. Um, just as a little bit of an introduction, um, I'm going to hand you over to Steve. Uh, to introduce from the website, hey? Um, yes, regarding your upcoming course. Um, and also let's um, know about your two courses. Is it going to be you first or sorry, Dorothy? Yeah, well, uh, we're going to start with uh, basically, uh, I guess we'll do it in the sections of why we chose the book. Mm -hmm. And then and then the second one is how to approach the book, how to divide that up. And the third one is how we imagine the actual live sessions going through that. So if I can um, share, I'll go to the website. Hey, yeah. And these are eight week courses that start uh, the start of October. So yeah. three weeks from today, basically. Hmm. I'm just uh, having, here we go. Oh, we go. Thank you very much. Now, are, are you not seeing this yet, are you? No, no we're seeing you. Okay, here we go. I'll do it. And you look great. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. So here uh, is when you first land on the page, uh, as I showed you at the beginning, you'll see an overall uh, introduction to the course. And for 2021, the four of us agreed to take on, again, all four of us, it was a brand new, oh no, I've never done this before, but it looks fun. Yeah, I guess I'll give it a try kind of attitude. Uh, mm -hmm. Just quickly looking at these little orange dots, uh, deep and focused pedagogical exploration, uh, eight weekly uh, mm -hmm. Zoom sessions live. Uh, we give you recordings for each one in order to catch up. Uh, interactive, uh, safe, private forum, uh, which is hopping depending on the week and the topic. Uh, meaningful professional networking. Uh, I've already, again, we had 12 people in the course. I've been in touch with seven of them on other topics already wow. since the end of our course. You know, we're, we're buddies. Uh, one, one wrote to four of us at once saying, 
usually I don't do this, but we all know each other now. So this is okay, isn't it? You know, and that was really nice. Um, and then again, just improving, finally improving your thinking, your teaching, and you yourself becoming a greater mind. So if you look through, you can see uh, this one's already finished with Kevin and Scott. And now Dorothy's is up. And in order to learn more about it, click this conveniently labeled button called Learn More. And mine is also down there. Um, so, just before moving on, sorry, Steve. Yeah. Um, to clarify with uh, anyone who's uh, was asking, the recordings that are shared there from the recordings from the tutorials, and so, but the course itself is not a recorded course. It's a live in-person course where you can join those tutorials eight times each week, but you get a recording of that afterwards in case you miss it, or just if you want to go back and listen to it again and learn a second time yeah and a lot of people said you know at the beginning you, you see their heads go down and they're furiously taking notes and the relief on their face when we say hey don't worry five minutes after the session we're going to send you a recording of it so relax focus on listening and what you want to say yes and we do that with all our courses yeah of course yeah so if we um if we click on dorothy's it takes us to this page and it's got the, you know, take this course, you can click on it, uh, it brings you to the, the registration page. And it's got Dorothy's uh, introduction to it. And you can see below that there are eight sessions starting October 3rd, uh, 90 minute sessions. And wherever you are in the world, click on the little convert time button, and it will tell you what time it is in your specific location. Okay. Um, and again, there's more information, um, read and contact us if you have anything else that you need to know before signing up for it. Um, I'm, since we're right here, uh, yeah, we'll come back, I guess, at the end. <laughs> yeah, uh, mine is the same thing. All right, um, a little introduction to it. Again, we're gonna talk you through some of this today and the same kinds of information are available. Okay. Is that good enough, Phil? Yeah, so people can go read there later, but let's hear from you and Dorothy. And also uh, just to let Alison um, Miyake know, if, who's asked nicely in the comments on Facebook, I should like to also hear a little bit about, you know, what you mean by visible learning. And we shall hear about that from Steve next. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dorothy, you want to go first or second on um, why you chose the book? Well, why I chose, well, now that you've asked the question, I have to answer it. Um, I, I, I chose it from the title, right, which is English for 21st Century Skills. And I, I hear that, I mean, 21st Century Skills, it's the buzz everywhere. It's in national curriculums, it's in textbooks, it's in conference themes and whatnot. And I'm just interested in an idea of like what is a 21st century skill exactly is it really different from a 20th century skill i mean obviously the century is different but have the skills changed that much and one one thing that's interesting about this book it's it's new it came out in 2020 but because it came out in 2020 people were writing right in 2019 yeah so these articles were being or chapters were being finished before COVID hit. So that's a whole nother spin to, I mean, we, we all in the last year or two learned skills we did not know <laughs> we yeah. could learn or needed to have, but we, 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 we reached in somewhere and we found them. And that's now part of our world. And I think, you know, we'll have a lot more online learning once the pandemic is finished as well. So I'd love to bring in that aspect. It's the word COVID doesn't appear in the book, but I think so much of what people are writing about here, and there's there's tons on, on digital skills and tech skills and communication and intercultural competencies, that's all woven through the themes. So I'd love to sort of bring in the new, new normal <laughs> to, to those topics as well. Great. Do I have to wait for you to ask me, Phil, or can I jump in and do it? I think you can jump in and do it, Steve. Okay. How'd you pick? How'd you pick your book? And I, I have I have the same question as as the woman in the chat. Is what 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 does your title even mean? Yeah. So it's all based on this original book by John Hattie, 
and he's a uh, uh, professor teacher in started in New Zealand. He's now in the States, but he spent over 20 years learning, studying, researching, how do we actually see that learning is taking place? Okay. And now I, in our recent Facebook live, I said the first five, 10 years, my head was so full on the kind of basics of classroom management. Yeah. What, what am I doing next to get right. through the lesson and kind of deal with all the surface problems within lessons? But then once I hit 25 years of teaching, I, I kind of felt like I started hovering over the classroom because I had been through almost every situation and I could now kind of look at details that I'd never even noticed before. And so that was something that was very interesting to me. And it's kind of, he calls it, or it was quoted as the, the holy grail of, of teaching because it's based on some 800 plus at the time of this writing meta analyses and now a meta analysis is like take one topic like homework find every research paper that's been done on homework and then using something called the effect size measure how much impact it actually had on students learning and it's broken down into small, medium, or large. Those are these three effect sizes. And so that's basically what they've analyzed through literally millions of students, thousands of uh, uh, research pieces, um, and they've got it down to about, they've got it down to 250 basic things like categories of things we do in a class, and they've all been measured. So wow. that to me, so this book was quite detailed, quite scientific, quite stats oriented. And so he came out with this one, Visible Learning for Teachers. And so all of the heavy, hard stuff is in here. And it's all been kind of, um, you know, uh, whatever that word is. Be anyway. accessible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So that's what it is. And um, hopefully it's going to be exciting as hell to go through it with a bunch of teachers that are uh, excited about learning this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> exciting stuff. And uh, kind of uh, for both of you as well, what do you kind of see teachers on your courses doing together from week to week? Well, my what I would like to do is 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 really, really, really focus on practical applications of everything in here. I'm, I'm sure other teachers like me have had the experience. You go to a conference, you you see a terrific presentation on I don't know leadership or something, and you and even if that presenter gives you practical things to do, you think, oh, I've got to I've got to integrate this into my class, but then you. You get back to your own situation and, you know, the syllabus is set, the curriculum is set, you're using this textbook and the midterm is going to be on January and you got homework due on Friday and everything is so structured. It's really hard to get even ideas that you're excited about actually into your teaching. Yes. So the, the, the chapters in this, there, there's 22 chapters in this book and they're all, they're all quite short. I mean, each one, they take very different ideas. They're, they're, pretty short. So I'd like to, you know, take an idea, discuss it. What does this mean? Do we agree? What does this look like? And then get, you know, a variety of teachers to really explain exactly how they would integrate that into a course they're currently teaching. Or if you're not currently teaching a course that you remember teaching recently. So not saying, well, I'd like to, you know, in, do something for students' well-being in my course as well. But instead to say, you know, week three, after we finish this page in the book, I want my activity to look like this. So we really get absolutely specific stuff spelled out. And then, of course, you can learn from everybody else. We might wind up with a resource bank of shareable lesson plans. But I think that's going to increase the chances that we'll be able to take these skills and integrate them into to how we're actually teaching. So each week we'll focus on, on hopefully two, maybe it depends how deep we go, one or two 
of the of the units, but then really break it down not only to what does it mean, but what am I going to do about that? If I think this is an important, if I think digital literacy is important, what do I do about that? How do I bring that to my students in my situation? Right. So. so I can also see myself if I'm on your course and you know I have the opportunity, I can put that into practice. I might get a class yeah. during that week. I can yeah. do it and. You know, the great thing is, is I can come back and I can share that with other teachers. Exactly, exactly. You I'm say, this about. was brilliant, or I imagined it would work like this, but in practice, half the students did this. And then we can we can dissect it because everybody's working on that same concept together. So, and, you know, hopefully we'll have teachers from different countries, people teaching different levels, people teaching different age groups. So, you know, we can get a sort of a rich experience in that way. Because, you know, as a teacher, you sort of, you don't know what you'll be teaching in five years. Our, yeah, our, 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 our contacts are always changing, you know, so. Absolutely, exciting stuff. I think so, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> In, uh, in this book, uh, Dorothy mentioned she had 22 chapters. He's got nine chapters here, and it seems uh, in three different sections. And so it starts out talking about the, the kind of the research, that effect size idea, as well as the role of teachers. And that's a huge, he argues that teachers have a bigger role than a number of other uh, influences on uh, learning. And so he makes that argument there. We'll look at that together. And then it goes again in a practical vein, goes into the very uh, specific uh, preparing the lesson, you know, all the choices. He says this whole book is about identifying the choices that teachers make. And based on the research, are these choices having small, medium, or large impacts. Now, you can argue it. I always say in any presentation I do, steal any idea you like, tweak it for your context, or refute it yeah. for a reason. And all of those are you know, absolutely wonderful ways to learn. So it goes from preparing the lesson, starting the lesson, um, then the flow of the lesson, and then the flow of feedback within the lesson. And the end of the lesson so it's just set up in a very pragmatic way for yeah. teachers to go through it um again dorothy and i have talked a little bit about i've heard some of these ideas and i'm thrilled uh with the way you want to approach the lesson and mine is pretty heavily influenced by what I saw being in Kevin's course. You know, we, we come in at the beginning of the class and we have a little bit of how was the reading, sort of global, you know, and we kind of, if there's anything that needs to be defined to make sure we all understand it the same way and kind of, yeah, these um, sort of global reactions to it, then we'd go into a breakout room and, and work on what did I learn? What do I agree with? What do I disagree with from this chapter and why? Mm -hmm. Come back, share between the two or three different breakout rooms, things that, you know, I'll, I'll say something I heard from Phil that stuck with me because it was meaningful, mm -hmm. you know? And then we'll go into another breakout room and talk about the application of these ideas, very much like Dorothy mm -hmm. saying, specifically to our lessons and our teaching. Another 15, 20 minutes working together, come back, report, and then move on to, so that first kind of segment takes about an hour, and then we move on, we've got another 30 minutes to go globally again on just uh, problems and solutions, basically, mm -hmm. based on this kind of uh, topical issues that come up. So uh, yeah. Uh, and then whatever can't be done, um, Dorothy, you've had our, uh, you've had five years of your self-publishing. <laughs> you, you know how much work you had to put in on the forums, you yeah, know, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, but that's yeah. wonderful because it's, it's a place for ideas to, to grow and or fester, however you want to look. Right, but, and you can, you know, sh share links to other, you know, articles and videos and, yeah. you know, things when you're when you're talking with you know 12 other people ideas are going to come to you and they'll keep coming you know yep. all week until you we move on to the next topic and it's it's nice that we have a place where we can write those things out and yep. of course you know time zones being what they are depending where in the world people are i mean i i I chose a time zone that i'll be awake for yep. but it might not be a time zone someone else is awake for 
but they can still participate by watching the recording. And then, you know, we'll have the, the discussions that everybody's participating in asynchronously. And yeah. Yes. And so uh, to answer, Samira was asking too about, you know, access to sections or uh, Francesca, thanks for question asking about practical tips. So Dorothy is just saying uh, all the participants share them in the ITDI forums and participants have yeah. indefinite access to those forums. And, you know, even after the course, like the last mm -hmm. two courses, you can see people still posting, sharing, commenting. Yeah, uh, it's a it's an a lot. It's a it's a forum that lives on. You're yeah. welcome to go in indefinitely. Uh, there was a posting in our forum just last week. Well, the actual forum thread came from one of the teachers saying, can we make a thread that's just for research articles on TBLT? Yeah. And Kevin said, yeah, of course. And two minutes later, yeah. it's made. People are uploading. Yeah. Yeah, so it's nice that way. All right. Uh, uh, what was the third thing that you wanted to share about, Steve? Just refresh me. <laughs> we probably uh, already started overlapping. We, yeah, we did. We, we, been, we yeah. got it. We got it. Why we right. chose the book and approaching the, the breakup of the book and the classes, which we've now covered nicely. Excellent. Um, there are a couple of questions that had come in elsewhere as well. Uh, I'll just go back as well, check if you have, there are any other questions from the Facebook uh, comments. So please add any that you have. Uh, so some people say, you know, uh, like Kevin had mentioned, you know, this was like one of the best grad, uh, grad courses. Uh, it was like doing a grad course and a participant said, yeah, it was like the ideal grad course, but without the pressure of grades. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, as a teacher, do I need to have a diploma or a master's in order to join one of these courses? Okay. No, right? no. Uh, you, you, you need to have interest and enthusiasm and I think realistically enough time to put into it, you know, to do the reading and, and do the thinking and, and respond and, and interact. You know, if, that, if this is your busiest semester, you might want to wait for, for another course, but... I, I, I really have no interest in whether anyone has a degree or not. That's, that's not important. Are you teaching? Do you care about teaching? You know, even if you're you know, a future teacher or you haven't been teaching the last year or so because of whatever situation, um, if you care about teaching and you want to learn and you want to discuss and you want to figure things out, though, those are the qualifications. Yeah, we've heard that. That uh, Dorothy just reminded me. We've heard that from people who were not teaching at the time and came in and did some other course with us and said, oh, my God, I feel like I'm on fire now. I've just been reignited by the yeah. energy and support from all the teachers around me. Um, I was saying with the. Uh, I wondered how much I would be able to put this into practice if I was still in my first year trying, oops, trying to figure everything out. Sorry, just trying. What to happened there? I want that, to was a, that was a that was a computer next to the computer. But anyway, but yeah, I just wondered. Um, so if you're at the very beginning of your career, you might not reap the benefits of all this mm. discussion for a few years down the road. Um, so yeah, just, uh, take it for, get what you can out of it, but we'll accept yeah. anybody as Dorothy said, yeah. with interest and desire to teach and learn. Okay. Um, so in terms of how much experience should I have as a teacher, uh, if I want to take this course? Yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Same answer. I mean, I, because I want to ask people to think about applying it to actual lessons, mm -hmm. I would say if you've never done any teaching, even student teaching, it, it, it's harder to imagine something hypothetical. Yes. But even if you were an MA student who'd done, you know, two months of student teaching, you'd have something to pin those ideas on. Right. But, Excellent. you know, if you had three, four, five years of teaching, whether it's online or face to face or what, just, just a, a, a practical situation in your head that you can say, you know, I would take this idea this is how I would bring this idea into this classroom with these students. So I, I, I do want that practical focus. So mm -hmm. I, would, I would hope whoever takes my class has done at least some teaching somewhere. Right. right. Um, and I think, to... sorry, I just that uh, John, John Hattie was saying he's got a whole new book called Mindsets. 
-hmm. and it's that teacher's mindset and he's got these kind of 10 categories and so i'm just sitting here thinking boy i might not have been able to handle this or put it into practice but i sure would love to have known about yeah. this way of thinking when i was a beginner teacher so that that opens mm. the door for yeah. some people yeah. yeah definitely if I, there's some things that if we'd learned earlier in our career we might have uh, fine-tuned things sooner <laughs> um yeah. so yeah it doesn't matter what context you know uh, i'm teaching in, right if i'm a teacher on the course whether i'm teaching young learners or adults yeah. or teenagers yeah. Yeah. Like, i'm going to do something from the them. 21st century skills i mean there are there are some that are, are are sort of specific there's one on on reading text there's something on using songs there's preparing students for the workplace. So if you're working with young learners, maybe preparing for the workplace is a bit <laughs> in your future. But a lot of these on creativity, on digital literacy, on critical thinking, on teach, get, making well, bringing well-being into the classroom would, would apply no matter whether you had adults or young adults or, or children or private students or classes of students. I mean, I think they're, they're broad enough that most of them would apply to any context. Excellent. Thank you very much, Dorothy and Stephen, for answering all those questions and uh, sharing about your courses. Uh, it's been a great buzz as well from uh, everyone in the chat. Thank you so much for all your comments and your questions there as well. I'll share my book some more. Those the this, books. Book, this book I know is, is available as an ebook for people who are having any shipping issues in their, their countries. Um, I mean, I, I ordered my copy from overseas and it came in days. I was amazed at how it was faster than anything I could have ordered domestically. But if you if you want an ebook, which will you know come like that, it's also available as a digital book, which is nice. Yes. And so we did, I did do a check into kind of a couple of different countries around the world, depending upon where you're from. It may be um, next day delivery. Um, the longest is 10 to 14 days. So um, but there's still three weeks until the course begins. So plenty of time for everybody who's yeah, checking just, this or the recording. Just to reiterate, they start like October 3rd for Dorothy's course on Sundays in many parts of the world. Um, uh, and in uh, mine, they'll be on Monday nights in Japan. Um, so three weeks from now, they'll begin. If you want to sign up, you, you want to get your book ordered uh, as soon as you can. And all of the information we've pinned to the in the, and is shared in the link in the chat as well. So yeah. you can find out and all the course details there. I think if somebody is on the fence, they don't know if they want to take a course, maybe they have to check, think about it. If you went ahead and you bought the book and you didn't take the course, hmm. You'd still be left with a really great book. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they, of course, you could you could read on your own, and it wouldn't be the same experience. But I mean, I they're, they're not bad books to have, even if you don't take the course. So they're, they are great books in language education. Yeah. Yes, they are. So. Absolutely, um, you've picked them for a reason. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the other questions you had was about uh, scholarships. Do we offer scholarships? And, yeah. Um, ITDI as a social enterprise, then we've always strived to kind of ensure that uh, we make things as affordable and accessible to everyone as possible. And so we do always try and make sure that a certain percentage of um, participants can be on yeah, scholarships. Yeah, absolutely. There, there should be a link on the page for a scholarship application. And that covers people who who don't have the funds for whatever reason, or there are people in countries where who might have the money but just have no way of transferring the funds that comes up from some countries that that you know just the banking systems are more closed. Mm -hmm. So, but you do have an application where you can explain your context and your interests and 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 your issues, and then we do we do choose some scholarship students every term for for courses which which is nice this is very nice it makes us happy to be able to say that affordable accessible meaningful you know the kinds yeah. of courses that we want to make but at at the bottom of everyone's page my page my course page and dorothy's course page uh, there's a block that says scholarships and a button uh, please fill it in as much as you can, because that goes to a committee who looks at them all. And, uh, you know, we get lots sometimes, depending on the course or the topic, and we'll choose the ones that seem most um, meaningful. 
Okay, so just as we um, wrap up but, um, before we do, then I'd like to invite people um, to join us in Zoom after the Facebook Live has finished. So if you'd like to chat to and meet uh, Dorothy and Steve in person, you're welcome to come say hello <laughs> in, and in ask person? any other questions. Kind, kind of in person, I mean, <laughs> the, the top online half, in the top online half of my virtual. <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> Indeed, actually, I guess I've lived online for so long now that it feels like it's in person. It, it, it does kind of, uh, I and mean, that's why I say post pandemic, the world of teaching has it's it's been changed forever right we've yeah. all we've learned how to teach online but we've also learned how to learn online and we've learned how to socialize online and that's fantastic for you know geographical distribution you can reach people in countries that before you would have had to fly to and so, yes yeah. and definitely we've Some had good a few came out of it yeah We've had a few people join courses and say that you know they would never have been able to travel to a city to do that they've also got yeah. kids their own kids to look after yeah uh, or people are taking care of parents or they have a full-time job or you know you can't always pack up and fly somewhere and, and yeah the other thing you know sometimes uh people are taking courses and they're like oh i'm sorry my kids just come into the room and it's fine we we know that sometimes happens and yeah it's, so you don't need to make that a barrier to participating. I've got a friend as well who's taken a kid to work in uh, in government, and you know it's just it's part yeah. of the way things are. The way it is. The way and it is. And why not? And why not? Make it yeah. happen. Okay. Uh, so the link is now shared in the chat for the Zoom meeting, and you're welcome to come and join us. And we'll be around for another 15, 20 minutes or so. It looks like a child behind you is moving up. The door <laughs> has opened and closed. There, yeah. yeah, that was mine. Why don't you, uh, if you're able to drop that link on the Facebook page as well, some people. It is in the Facebook page, yes. And in the uh, Facebook Live? It's in the Facebook Live comments. Yes, um, good, good. Yes. Okay. And we'll stay a few minutes if anybody wants to come in and say hi. It's pinned to the top, so. Thank it you, be Phil. Easier for anybody you're to not required to come in and say hi, no, but you can. No. But you can. No. That's Thank right. you, Dorothy, for jumping from one Zoom to another. Yep, yep. Just Zooming with my, my private student and then coming on here. And yep, that's... See, if, it, if we were teaching live, I could not have made that commute in, in 30 seconds. <laughs> I think even Superman <laughs> would be hard-pressed. Yeah. Uh, we've got Anne joining us. Great to have you join and come in, Anne. Yay. You've stopped the live, Phil. You're going to stop the Facebook live. Uh, yeah, in just a minute or so. Uh, so wind down. One last thank you to everybody who joined us live on Facebook. And if you are live with us now and want to join us in the room, the link is there. And for anyone else who might be watching the recording, if you have any questions, then feel free to put them in the comments and the chat. We will keep an eye on that as well over the next week or two. Uh, and you can also ITD. Uh, ITDI, so you can email us directly <laughs> as well at ITDI. I think we should make that a new verb. You can ITDI you us. Can ITDI us. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much once again, Stephen and Dorothy. It's been a pleasure to have you both with us. And good morning, good evening, good night, everyone. <laughs>